So here's a little video to explain how soap works. This is a fat molecule. Soap is actually made from fat, which is really interesting. Most people don't realize that. You'll notice here that it's mostly made up of carbon and hydrogen bonds. And we know from our study of electronegativities that the carbon-hydrogen bond is nonpolar. So fat, um, that's why fat doesn't dissolve in water, because it's mostly, it's a huge nonpolar molecule. And a nonpolar substance is not going to dissolve in water, which is a polar liquid. All right, so you can also notice here that fat has three long chains. And that's why it's called a triglyceride. Each one of those chains is a big, long, nonpolar carbon-hydrogen uh, branch. So what happens when you make soap is you add a base. And our case in lab, we use potassium hydroxide. And what happens is the base basically snips off those big long chains and it creates a molecule that is a long molecule that has two different ends. One end of the molecule is nonpolar, made up of carbon-hydrogen bonds. The other end of the bond is actually very polar, and it's actually a charged substance. So the soap molecule has a, um, is actually an ionic compound an ion, uh, on one end and a nonpolar molecule on the other. And it's because of this dual nature of the soap molecule that it can actually dissolve fats in water. Now this little stick diagram is a schematic drawing of soap. So the circular end represents the, the polar and charged end of the soap molecule. And the squiggly stick part represents the nonpolar hydrocarbon, which is what we would call hydrophilic, I mean hydrophobic. The hydrocarbon part hates water. It, doesn't want, it does not react with water. Whereas the hydrophilic end of the soap molecule is attracted to water. So this is how it works. It forms what's called a micelle, which you can think of as a circular cage around a fat molecule. So that tan glob in the middle is a piece of fat or oil that you want to wash off of your uh, dishes. Um, and you can see there the schematic diagram of the soap encapsulating that fat. So the nonpolar end of the soap is right in contact with the oil because nonpolar substances will interact with the nonpolar end of the soap. The polar end forms an outside layer, and the polar end of the soap molecule, when it forms this uh, micelle around the oil, can then be dissolved in water. So it's essentially like camouflage. You're camouflaging that oil from the water so that it can be washed away. <clears throat> Here's the saponification reaction. You're going to start with fat, and you're going to react it with lye. Lye is just a generalized term for a strong base. And that strong base comes in and snips off those fatty acid chains, and you get three soap molecules for each one molecule of a triglyceride. You also get a byproduct called glycerin, which you may have heard of, and there are glycerin soaps on the market as well. Now I have a really cool video to give you a more of a visual look at how this soap micelle works. When astronauts go up in space, they're allowed to bring some special items. Some astronauts fly M&Ms, some people fly beef jerky. Don Pettit, this guy, chose candy corn. He's a NASA astronaut who spent nearly half a year floating around the International Space Station. And while he was up in space... I elected to spend my off-duty time doing science of my own design. Like this zero-gravity candy corn demonstration. It's a macroscopic analogy to how a surfactant molecule works. And a surfactant molecule just means... Soap. So in this demo, a candy corn is equivalent to a soap molecule. And this water blob represents grease or oil. And basically the demo shows how soap cleans grease. Soap molecules have a water-loving end. So they call that hydrophilic. And a water-hating end. Hydrophobic. And that's important. Say you have a blob of oil and you throw it in a washing machine, the hydrophobic part of the molecule sticks into the grease and the oil. And the hydrophilic part uh, pokes up into the water. In candy corn, the hydrophobic hydrophilic sides are reversed. This part is water loving, and Pettit coated this side with oil to make it water hating. But the principle is the same. The molecules, or the candy corn, arrange themselves around the glob based on attraction or repulsion to water. Of course, that's how your clothes get clean. You cover them with these 
hydrophilic, hydrophobic molecules called soap. And once the soap molecules fully cover the grease blob, it becomes water soluble. It's called the critical micelle concentration. Or in candy corn. The critical candy corn concentration. Once it hits this concentration, all the dirt and the oil and the grease floats off of your fabric and it mixes with the water and then you pour the water off and you're left with clean clothes. Now in candy corn, there's a bonus science lesson. After you reach the critical candy corn concentration, and a most amazing thing happens, the blob goes from smushy to rigid. You can think of it like a putting the keystone in a Roman arch, where now all of a sudden gravity locks all the stones together and you have this rigid arch that you could drive traffic across. But we're in space, so it's not gravity at work, it's surface tension holding the ball together. This was one of many experiments Pettit did in space, but it's the only one that used candy corn. And I used our whole crew's supply of candy corn for this one demonstration, which I uh, profusely apologize to the rest of the crew because they didn't get to eat any. <laughs> for Science Friday, I'm Flora Lichtman.